And here we have the R. Yeah. This is the chapter. Let me minimize it. This is the chapter 15, the linear regression. The uh, learning goals of this chapter is basically introducing the linear regression. Um, emphasize that or that linear regression is a standard and very common tool for analyzing relationships between the uh, interval scale predictors and outcomes. And uh, linear regression models are essentially or basically a more sophisticated version of the Pearson correlations, but that the regression models are more power powerful tools compared with the correlation analysis. And in very general terms, the goal of the chapter is to um, go into the basics of the linear regression and its applications. So, um, yeah, the first question is, what is a linear regression model? So in this chapter, we are going to, or to explain, to talk about the linear, linear regression models, we are going to retake this data set called the parenthood, where we have two variables. One is a, one is the, a predictor, and the second one is the uh, response variable. The um, X values or the predictor is, is the uh, author or than sleep hours, and the response is like the mood or the grumpiness of the of Dan, like depending on on um, his sleep hours is their uh, grumpiness or the, the amount of grumpiness going from zero to 100. So we can describe this uh, relationship using a single line crossing all the points here. Um, yeah, the formula describing this strike line usually is written like the y equal to mx plus c where the two uh, involved variables are x and y and the coefficient m is the slope of the line and the c is the intercept of the line. The um, intercept uh, is defined as the value of y when we have an x of zero. And the slope um, me, me, it means that if you increase the x value by one unit, then the y value uh, go up by m units. A negative slope means that the y value will go down rather than up. So having this very basic formula, um, we can like go to a more sophisticated version. It's basically the same. Um, where we have the this uh, another way to represent the regression or this strike line. And this is in where, yeah, it's, it's basically the same. We have like the uh, response variable. In here, the... Um, the what the coefficient is going to be represented by v uh, one. We have our predictor variable and our uh, intercept. So um, and here is not the author is noticing that we are using hat y because we are dealing with um, actual data. And where else? Yeah, and here we have that the uh, we have these like sub indices because they are like the for example the x i is the value of a predictor variable in the uh, i observation and y is the corresponding value of the uh, response variable and mm -mm, yeah the coefficients are changing change to b but basically it's the same means that B1 uh, is a slope and B0 the intercept. Now, 
Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, as we can see from the plot, the line doesn't fit or doesn't fall uh, exactly over the point. So um, uh, what we have in the regression are like prediction rather than actual data. That is why we use this hat. And the difference between the model prediction and the actual data is called residuals and is defined as uh, with this formula where the residuals are is represented by the epsilon letter and is the difference between the uh, predicted data and the actual data. And um, yeah, with this, we can write the complete linear regression model as the um, yeah, the simple linear regression clause or adding adding up the uh, residuals. So, yeah, now how we can estimate a linear regression model? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, the, yeah, something that is pointing out here is that when our linear regression is good, our residuals are small, but when our regression is bad, the residuals are larger. So yeah, the best fitting regression line is when that has the smallest residuals. Mm. And the formal definition for that is that the uh, best, the best estimated regression coefficients are those that minimize the sum of square residuals, which call either write like this or like this. Um, yeah, what something um, pointing here is that what we have is our estimated um, coefficients rather than the observed ones. Um, and yeah, this type of regression is usually called the ordinary less square regression. Uh, we have more types of regression, but this is the basic or the ordinary uh, regression. Um, mm, so far we know that w how we can define the best choice of the regression coefficient. But the question is how we find the these like the these the best uh, numbers. So in here, the author introduces the LM function in R, which basically has like two basic inputs, which is the data, of course, and the second one is the formula that specifies the regression model. The simple simplest uh, formula is like the outcome as a function of a predictor. And here we have, we can use the this LM function, like specifying the formula. And when we run this, we are going to obtain the intercept and the uh, slope here. And these results can be in a formula that can be visualized as this, like the y is equal to, or the y values is equal to um, this slope multiplied by the our predictor variables plus the intercept. So how we interpret interpreted this um this regression is for this we have that um yeah the our slope is like as I mentioned previously negative negative um close to nine and means that if I increase the uh x value by one then I am going to decrease y by 8.9. So in simple terms or in our example means that each additional hour of sleep will improve my mood of reducing the grumpiness by 8.9 or almost close to 9. 
So, and, and also the intercept correspond to the expected value of y when the predictor is equal to zero. That means uh, if I, or if the author uh, has like zero hours of sleep, the grumpiness is going to have a value of 100 to 5 grumpiness. So, uh, yeah, that is, yeah, the most like the author ch ch showed that this is the easiest way to obtain a regression model in R using the LM formula here, but there are more functions. And um, well, the next point here is that, uh, sorry, <laughs> Federica, can you give me just a second to close my door? Because yeah. What's could you? I am going to close my door because it's really noisy yeah. outside. Yes, okay. Yeah. Here. Again. So, uh, yeah. So, um, it says that the single predictor linear regression is very common, but uh, there are many projects where we have multiple predictors that we want to uh, examine. So the when we have more than one predictor, the regression now is called multiple linear regression. And that type of regression is conceptually simple because the only thing we need to do is add more uh, terms to our regression equations. So, um, uh, for example, in our in our case, we are going to use both the Dan sleep variable and the and his baby sleep uh, variable as a as the two variables to predict the uh, father or the Dan grumpiness. So, um, mm -mm. yeah, we to include two predictors, we modify the formula as. This we include the the slope for the pre, for the both predictors. I mean, yeah, we have we are summing both predictors with their related to their slope, and to this we are going to uh, sum the intercept and their residuals. So yeah as in the single um, predictor regression, the residuals are related to the difference between the predicted value and the observed observe value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the basic idea of keeping the um, square residuals at their minimal numbers is like, the best regression line is basically the same. In this figure, uh, the author is uh, ex showing a visual way uh, of how uh, multiple um, linear regressions looks like. And we can observe here that we have our actual data and we are, but in this case, we are considering two predictor variables. And also we can account the residuals for the prediction. So it's basically the same concept uh, than in the single or simple linear regressions. So for performing a multiple linear regression in R, the only thing we need to do is modify the formula, like for adding or for including the two predictor uh, variables. So, mm, see, so yeah, here we have the linear model LM function and specifying the formula that the grumpiness is a function of the uh, sleep of the father plus the uh, sleep of the baby. So um, running this call, we are obtaining this uh, output where we have the uh, intercept of the regression line 
and the slope of the two uh, predictors. So um, we can observe that the done slip coefficient is quite large, suggesting that every hour of additional sleep uh, is important or like every hour sleep the father loses ma ma makes him like a lot grumpier. However, the coefficient for the baby sleep is really small. So, so this suggests that the the uh, hours of sleep of the baby really doesn't matter. So what really matters is how the father is uh, sleeping. So um, yeah, yeah, there is, so yeah, we can have these cases where we have only two predictors, but we can, can, can include as much uh, predictors as, as we uh, have or as we wish. So in such cases, we have a formula for a general case which is uh, this one, we just basically need to sum up or be adding the different predictors we have and summing to that the intercept and the residuals. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, here we face another uh, problem or an additional problem is that we don't know if this regression model we run is uh, good or bad. So for example, as, as we mentioned, that model says that every hour of the sleep of the father improved their mood a lot, but we are just that can be just like a like random thing. So, um, Yeah. So for evaluating how well is our regression or model, we can obtain this uh, indicator, which is the R square value. Uh, remembering that we previously obtained the residuals as the difference between the uh, actual data versus the predicted data. We, with that, we can obtain the sum of the square uh, residuals here. And we hope that that uh, number, we, we expect that number to be very small, which, um, but how, I am, how is my small we, want that number uh, to be. So we would like to be very small compared with the total variability in the outcome variable. So um, yeah, we for, for that we can just obtain the uh, variability in the re response variable and compare it with the um, the sum of the square residuals. In R, like manually or yeah, manually we can do this operation specifying our X and Y variables here, like X as the predictor as the father sleep and the response variables as the uh, mod. So mm -mm. yeah, we can just like obtain the uh, predictor or the regression using the coefficients we obtained previously running the linear regression model here. But for each of our um, predictor value, values and to obtain the predicted uh, Y or the response but the predicted values. So, mm, mm, 
so having this, we can we can just calculate our sum of the uh, square residuals using this uh, command here. And yeah, we obtain just a single number that doesn't mean so much as it's it the author mentioned previously, how small this number uh, we are expecting to be. It depends or for that for knowing that we can compare this number with the um, with the total variability out of the outcome variable. So for that, we have here, we estimate with this command the uh, total variability. We observe that this number is bigger than the uh, sum of residuals, square sum of residuals. And that is like something good saying that at least uh, the total variability, variability is not bigger than the Mm, so, but for making this like better or more uh, intuitive, we convert this number to an index called the area square that is, um, where is like a metric that is going from zero to one, that where th this zero value means that no where where the where an area square value of one means that the our linear regression fits or fall perfectly in our uh, observed values while the zero value means that we are explaining basically nothing. So the formula for estimating the R square values is this one where we are basically comparing the, our total variability with the uh, with our residuals, so we can compute this uh, operation here like this. And well, usually this uh, metric is called the coefficient of determination and has a very simple interpretation: is the proportion of the variance in the outcome variable that can be accountable by the predictor. So. Um, in our case, an um, area square R square of eight put point eight means that our predictor explain at least eighty percent of the variance in the outcome. Um, and yeah, so next thing is that yeah, the square correlation is identical to R square for a linear regression with only a single predictor. So to illustrate this, the like the author is like just computing the a correlation and squaring it, and it, that is demonstrating that that is that value is identical to uh, our R square value. So yeah, th there is like a relationship of, between regression and correlation. Um, what else? Ah, yeah. So mm, the most use or the most common use metric for um, saying how well or how good is our regression is the R square, or so, some people prefer report the adjust R square. Um, and this is because adding more predictors into the model will always make the R square value to increase. So the adjust R square introduces like as is, is like change. So basically, basically, what we include in the formula of the adjusted R square is the number of observations and the number of predictors here. So 
Yeah, here is the formula with the adjusted area R. So and yeah, the main advantage of this is that if we increase the number of uh, predictors in the model, this really is going to or give us a true metric of how well is our uh, progressions. But the main disadvantage of this is that we cannot interpret this like as straightforward as we interpret just the single R square. Um, so it's not like easily or very, or cannot be easily interpreted. So, um, uh, but choosing between the R square or the adjusted R square is subjective depending on the researcher. And it says that if the interpretability is a priority, R square is uh, like the best choice, while the adjusted R square is better for correcting a bias of adding more predictors. So, mm -mm. So additionally, it says that if we are concerned about uh, chance improvements in R squared due to adding more predictors, we can run a hypothesis and testing. And that is the next uh, section of this uh, chapter. So um, yeah, for uh, linear regressions, we can just like have two types of hypotheses. One is testing our that our regression model performs better than a new model. And the second one is to test if a, a specific regression coefficient significantly differs uh, significantly from zero. So the first is testing the model as a whole. So we have our two uh, hypotheses. The null is that there is no relationship between the predictor and the response variable, while the alter alternative is that the data is distributed in ex or exactly in the way that the regression model predicts. So formally, the new model is represented with this formula where we only include the intercept and the, uh, is, the residuals. So um, we are just ruling out the predictors from these equations, basically trying to say that, trying to see if we can just like make predictions with a single value, which is the intercept. So um, yeah, our alternative model is represented by this formula, which is the um, regular formula for the linear regressions, multiple linear regressions. So, um, mm -mm. yeah, comparing these two hypotheses is similar to something like we did with ANOVA. Um, we can divide the total variance into the uh, residual variance and the regression model variance. So here we have that the regression, that, that the model variance is defined as the total variance in the response variable, uh, less the uh, sum square of the residuals. And um, I think that is going to be interpreted as the uh, variance explained in the model. So and having this calculation of this number, we can convert this sum of squares into mean squares by di dividing them between the degrees of freedoms. Here we have it. For the... Mm -mm, Model metric, we use the, our degrees of freedom is going to be equal to 
the number of predictors, while for the receivables, the total degrees of freedom is going to be equal to our number of observation less the number of predictors less one. And having this, we can go straight forward and calculate the F statistic like this. And this is going to be interpreted as uh, we did previously. Um, indicated like if our we have low F values, our null hypothesis is performing poorly in comparison with the alternative hypothesis. And this statistic is just like just checking that the model as a whole is performing better than random guessing. So, but something the author points out here is that failing the F test suggests that suggest or is a strong measure that our model or our data can be weak. But however, in contrast, passing this test doesn't mean that our model is good. Uh, this because the individual factors or the coefficients might be might still be unreliable. So for that, we are plotting this uh, regression two or multiple regression we performed previously. And we can observe that this like tiny coefficient for baby sleep is really much smaller than the father's sleep. And possibly the only thing that matters is the, yes, the father's sleep rather than the baby sleep. And To uh, test that, we can use just sim use a simple t test to see if the coefficient for baby sleep is significantly different different from zero. So for this, the null hypothesis will be that the uh, true regression coefficient is zero against the alternative hypothesis that the, the, this is different from zero. So. Um, and yeah, we can run all these uh, hypothesis tests in R. If, yeah, for to exemp exemplify this um, analysis we can do in R, we're uh, plotting the summary of the regression point two, and we obtain all these value, it says that the first part of the output is the just the formula we input into a model. The second part are is the, are, are the a summary of the residuals. It says that this part can uh, function or can give us a, a clue or a general view to see if our uh, model is going good or wrong completely bad. So because we assume that the results were normally distributed with a mean zero. So if, if the median of the residuals is close to zero and the first uh, quantile is close to the same size as the third quantile with uh, opposite sign, it means that we are doing a, a good, or we are having a, a good model. So, but if this is not like that, then uh, our it's probably that the assumption of the regression model are not like met. So, yeah. So the next thing in the output are the coefficients. Uh, each row correspond to a different coefficient. We, for that, we have the estimate, the standard error of the estimate, the t statistic, and the p value for each uh, coefficient. So mm -mm -mm. the degrees of freedom are specified in this line where it says that the residual uh, standard error. 4.35 on 97 degrees of freedom. Um, 
which is calculated as, as we mentioned previously in less k less one. Uh, um, um, yeah, the final part of the output, we find the F test and the R square values, which evaluate the performance of the model as a whole, as we uh, mentioned previously in here. Yeah, here is the R square and the F statistics. So um, um, the model significantly performs better than by chance, and the R square is close to uh, is point eight. So it means that we are we are having a really good uh, model. However, if we examine the t test for individual uh, coefficients. It appears where here is we have here the t test. We have we can observe that the um, baby sleep variable has no significant effect, while the other predictor is the uh, or is the main contributor. So um, considering this uh, result of the t test, we can say that the this model using this both uh, predictor is not a good model or is not the most appropriate model for describing this relationship. So um, the initial model regression one seems to, to be a better choice. So uh, the author points out that it's always, despite that we're um, indicate our metrics of R square and the F statistics says that our model is good as a whole, we it's worth it all, always uh, check our individual coefficients metrics to see really we are choosing the best model. So and um, yeah this is what I have so far. Where else we have we have where in the book, let me show what we need to. There is more things. Let's think the significant. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the, we have more things about linear regressions like the. Can, uh, can we can we have a look a quick look at the model checking? Uh, yep. after the assumption, yeah, to see uh, the model checking is still looking at the matrix, the value of the matrix, isn't it? So three counts yep. of residuals. Mm -hmm. Okay, we look at the residuals. Steven Dice Receivables, I have never heard of this. Kind of anomalous data. I think it's worth it. If, if, if you agree, I can present the next week this uh, second part of the chapter. Yeah, we can even, uh, since uh, we have like 10, 10 minutes left uh, or something more even uh, we can even have a look at that now to see uh, what are the formulation the, the cook distance this is still looking at the residuals mm -hmm. uh, with a proportion of the, the the k is the number of of observation uh, uh, predictors the predictors okay and h I don't so know where you say distance, uh, but it's not going back to the matrix. So there is either some more square uh, for checking the model. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just the residuals. I'm asking, I'm checking the normality, the linearity. The Cook's distance. Let's see. 
Ok. Normal you have the residuals. And so, uh, can you scroll a bit up uh, on the normality of the residuals? Okay, so uh, uh, the, so uh, this is uh, an histogram of the residuals. Okay, and then this they, is standard they, residuals. This is a QQ plot uh -huh. on the standardized residuals to, to see if they normally distributed. Okay. Checking for the inheritance of the relationship. Basically checking the assumptions, right? Like the assumptions we're making mm -hmm. in the model. Checking the linearity. What is this? And the fitted values are the uh, fitted values of the regression as uh, the estimate, aren't the estimates, fitted, fitted values. Fitted values are the estimate. Right. Oh no. Against observed, observed values. Okay, so these are the, the prediction, um, and these are the observed value. So All right. this should be a line uh, zero, uh, like. Right. Yeah. So just comparing the predicted versus the observed values, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. Plot of the residuals. This should be just, I think, you remember just noise, right? Like. Yeah, yeah. That 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 just uh, the yeah should be no. Uh, then then has already checked if if it's normally distributed. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And where else we have not the, the different receivers plots for the variables, predictors, repeated palette. So apparently okay, we are know. we have a good model. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so this is the values, okay, the coefficients again. In, in a, um, a different point of view the, of the, the model results, basically. Okay, yeah. we can have a look at that. And then... Uh, Homogeneity of the variance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Standardized residuals. So I don't know what is the homogeneity of the variance. The square of the standardized residuals, the square root of the size of the residuals. Perfect. Okay. And CV test, non constant variant test. What is what is the rate of it? Uh, ah, okay. She uses this the car package. The car package, okay. Okay. Uh, what what this NCV test function does, calculating the the variance formula on the fitted values, the t square.
no constant bias test. Okay, to check whether the va the uh, the bias of the fitted values, which means again the, the error or not. So the residual is less more bias less more. Okay. Yeah. Fifteen point. And the uh, LM test package and the car package to do the coefficient test. Okay. These are often called sandwich estimators. For the reason, they only make sense if you understand the math at a low level. Okay, basically, they, they still are checking the uh, error variation. Uh -huh. um, yeah, how they are distributed within the... Um, uh, the diagonal, diagonal, Continue. and then the collinearity. Okay, this is between the predictors. If you only got two predictors, value are always going to be the same. Okay. I think it's a, a, just a, a one and then model selection. Okay. Model selection. Uh, okay. The AIC. Information criteria. To compare different models and still the sum of square residuals. Okay, so this is the model that we did it before with uh, the slip and the baby and done baby slip. Mm -hmm. Uses the step function. Um, proper selection. To do the, the, the two backward and forward selection. Okay, but with two predictors. Huh? Okay. Yeah, okay. Comparing two regression models with ANOVA, this is the next chapter, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, and then, then we jump to ANOVA and we'll look at comparing models. I'm sure she will go back to some of this. Uh -huh. I mean, with 